How's it going ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Strictly Nintendo where I wanted to take a moment and talk about Xenoblade Chronicles 2. There's a lot to talk about so this is probably going to be a very long video. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Graphically the game is beautiful. I, I do kind of prefer the art style of Xenoblade Chronicles X. I think it was a little bit grittier but this art style most definitely fits the overall feel and theme of the game and Really, it's something that at first, I'm kind of torn, because at first I really kind of felt like uh, I, I liked the art style of Xenoblade Chronicles X better, but this did grow on me. It is a gorgeous game. There's very unique environments to explore. I mean, the worlds are just so amazingly creative. It really is, and there's just so much to experience that, uh, I mean, and, and there's a, a wide variety of environments. So I really do like the world that they created and I think it looks gorgeous and it definitely you can tell is more graphically demanding. There's a lot more detail. There's a lot more uh, atmosphere to everything. Uh, the characters look great. You know everything about it graphically is something that like I can't say I'm blown away by it but it's very appealing. You know there are some issues. There are frame rate issues okay but I mostly notice the frame rate issues in towns you know I don't really notice them out in the world you know exploring fighting you know I, I, I mostly had the frame rate issues in towns so it's not necessarily anything that detracted from the experience of the game but it is notable because you're going to run into frame noted significant frame rate issues um, other things is pop-ins, uh, more so in texturing, and uh, not so much necessarily significantly in the game, but more so in like, you know, when it jumps to the little mini-games when you're salvaging, uh, you'll see it, or when you're fast-traveling. You know, I, there's been plenty of times where I fast-traveled and I get to the town, it loads, and it's just like flat gray shapes and a flat blue background and then a level of texture pops in, then a level of texture pops in, then the final textures pop in. Uh, <laughs> so, but nothing really major as far as, you know, out in the, out in the world, you know, exploring, doing things, uh, you know, is more so in fast traveling or something like that. Uh, one of the things that I think they fixed beautifully is with the enemies. Like in two, you're walking along a cliff and a creature crawls up over the cliff or you're out in a field and it burrows out of the ground or it comes down a tree or something of that nature whereas one of the things that pissed me off about X especially early on you'd be like level 10 level 15 you're running from point A to point B and it could take 15 minutes in real time because the world was massive and there's nothing significant across that realm to give you a respawn point okay and you get like two-thirds, three-quarters of the way there, and then this giant skyscraper-sized monster that's a level 9 just appears out of... Uh, level 90, excuse me, just appears out of nowhere, aggro's onto you, one strike, you're dead. You know, that pissed me off. And in fact, because of stuff like that with X, I actually stopped playing X. Out of about, after about three weeks of playing, I stopped playing it, and I didn't go back to it for a month because stuff like that really pissed me off you don't have that necessarily with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. You still have those level 75s, 90s, and so forth that are out there, uh, but you can avoid them a lot better, and they don't, they don't just pop out of nowhere. You know, they're actually already preloaded, which is beautiful. You know, it's like you're running down the street, and you're like, oh, that's a huge ape. Oh, it's level 90. I'm going this way. You know, it's more so that, you know, you'll be level 20 and a level 26 will pop out or something like that but then again like I said it, it they, they burrow out of the ground or climb up a cliff or down a tree or something like that so that was very well done and I, I thoroughly enjoyed that I thought that they knocked that out of the park so really good in that regards uh, going on to controls this is a story driven RPG you got uh, the mechanics we'll get into in a little bit but there's there's nothing that requires like super precise controls um, you know, they, the controls are well done. 
you hit a button, something happens. <laughs> it's that simple. So there's nothing for me to complain about. Audio, phenomenal. The sound effects, the music is gorgeous. I absolutely hated the music in Xenoblade Chronicles X. I thought that at least 60% of the time the music didn't fit the game. Whereas here, the music fits the game and it's gorgeous. The voice actors for the English uh, voiceovers, I felt like maybe they could have done a little bit better to express the emotions of the character, but they did a great job. Uh, the Japanese voice pack, you know, the actors and actresses there did a great job of expressing emotions and having an impact in the performance and really, you know, really contributing to the feel and the, and, and the fluidity of the game. The problem is, is I don't speak Japanese and there are times where they were getting really passionate and speaking very fast and the subtitles were obviously following what they were saying and I couldn't finish reading the subtitles so I quickly stop doing that but Japanese voice artists uh, uh, voice and actors and actresses did a great job um, English voice actors and actresses did a really good job really good job so overall you know the graphics are solid uh, one thing to note as far as going back to the graphics real quick obviously I know there's the dynamic resolution in portable mode and yes there are times where you see it degrade it's noticeable but I don't see what all the crap online was about. There was nothing that, I mean, I never intended to play the game in portable mode, but then I realized, hey, I can play this in handheld and grind. So that when I'm ready, when I've gotten beefed up and I just want to charge through the story, then I can dock it and I can watch the story and experience the story on that beautiful 55 inch Samsung. All right. So, but I didn't see anything in handheld mode that ever detracted from the experience of the game. Yes, it, it's not gorgeous. You know, it's not a beautiful 60 frame, 720 consistently handheld experience. But it's there's nothing in the in the dynamic resolution that made me go, crap, this is terrible. I can't play it anymore. You know, it was more so like, eh, I saw it, okay. And it's only for a couple, you know, seconds here and there during, like, heavy, you know, processing issues. You know, like, a lot of battles, like, if you're if you're just fighting multiple enemies or something like that, you know, it's nothing major. So, graphically, I think the game was solid. Control-wise, solid. Audio, solid. Um, when you get into the mechanics, it's pretty simple. You know, it's pretty simple. Um... There's, it's self-explanatory. At first, I was like, why isn't there a strategy guide? But then I realized the game is self-explanatory. You know, if something aggroes onto you or you lock onto an uh, enemy and you want to battle, you press the A button and you start battling. You run up to the enemy, you start auto-striking. You know, as you auto-strike, you fill up your meter for your, uh, your arts. You hit your arts, you fill up your meter for your special. You let your special go one level, two level, three level, four level, whatever, and you use it, you know? Um, it's pretty simple. And then you get into like some of the other things like, uh, you know, what blades you're gonna use. And obviously, you're, if you're playing as Rex, you got Pyra, okay? She's always there. Um, and then you have like your other, you know, you have two other blades that you can have that you can switch through, but the characteristics of those blades can affect your overall stats. You know, you can have, you can you can take, you know, your accessories, and you can add armor and strength accessories to Rex to beef up your your attack. Right? Uh, you can level up your weapons. You know, you can level up the the arts and the special, and get even stronger. You can level up your affinity. You know, with one of your blades, or your ether defense with one of your blades, or your luck, or whatever. You know, your blades, their inherent characteristics will actually change things about you. And then you have the uh, the accessories that you're going to put on racks. You have the leveling up of the arts and the specials for each of the blades. You have uh, the ox cores that you put on the on your blades whether they have one two or three slots and then you can really kind of so it's like for instance I had a blade that did healing 
and I put a bunch of ox cores on her that uh, you know assisted with healing and then I had uh, another one that did uh, ether and I did a bunch of ox cores with her with him that did ether defense so I kind of build up my character and then I had Rex with him with a specific belt and set of armor to give him more health and more strength and then I leveled up all of their you know their arts and specials I also leveled up their affinities uh, their affinity charts it unlocks specific skill set, uh, unlocks uh, more powerful attacks, or even uh, it's it's one of those things. Though here's the thing that I love about the affinity is very rarely did I feel or find a situation where the affinity was significant to move through the game. Right? Uh, sometimes there was, but it was more like okay, well, I need this skill. And to unlock that skill with this blade, I have to go here and do this. I'll do that 10, 15 minutes later, I'm back into the story. So it didn't break things up significantly. Xenoblade Chronicles X had side missions and things that you had to do to continue the storyline, and it broke up the storyline. Xenoblade Chronicles X ended up being a, an amazing game that was only good, or well, great. It was an amazing game that ended up being great because of issues whether it was breaking up the storyline like that, not giving closure, it definitely needs a sequel, uh, to having a bunch of unnecessary side missions that had no relevance to the story and benefited you nothing in the advancement of your character. There is that in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. There's a, a side mission where you're helping this couple that's running away to a elope has absolutely nothing to do with the story and nets you nothing that benefits you to progress into the game or progress as a character. Um, but the beautiful thing is with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, they didn't make that important. You want to do the side missions, do them! You know? uh, some side missions you have to do if you want to unlock specific rare blades, but none of that really became central to progressing through the story. For the most part, you just had to be a badass. You just had to grind, level up, and there's some beautiful ways to do that, especially when you get into chain attacks and you find those enemies, like you're level 50, you find that level, that level 55 enemy or 56 enemy, uh, there's some uh, like, like flying manta rays, <laughs> and I grinded the crap out of them from like level 50 to level 60 and just shot up no time because I would fight them and get them down to like just that much. And then I'd go into a chain attack, and I'd have like two, three rounds of chain attack, and I'd be netting like, you know, almost 3,700 points of, of experience just nonstop. So there's a lot of really good aspects of that. So you, you, you have your basic grinding that you have to do, and you have some aspects, some things that you have to do. But it's like if you have one blade that has, say, let's say you need a fire right? You need a fire uh, skill. So you unlock that skill, and it needs level 4 fire. Well, if you have two blades that have fire skills, and they're both level 2, there you go. You just equip the second blade for that one second. You, you know, you overcome that obstacle, then you go back to whatever blade you were using. And that's something that I really enjoyed, being able to do that. So they give you a lot of different ways you can work around obstacles, and it allows you to focus on the story. I like that. You know, I liked that aspect a lot. It, it just becomes this thing where, by focusing on the story, especially with this game, it's it, this game gives you closure. It, it wraps everything up nice and neat. And it has everything that you want. It has action. It has, you know, strife. It has sadness and romance and you know anger it has everything and it has great character development from learning about each of the characters history and 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 how things unfold with flashbacks or things that just present themselves and then the character fills you in on stuff and the way that they build up all the characters the way that they allow you to re level up everything and customize everything um, you know, for one of the things that I did is I got my affinity up to the point and I got my levels up to the point where it was like my skills, my arts were like maxed out all the time. 
and I could sit there with the anchor shot and just spam the crap out of that and make sure that the battlefield was just loaded with HP potions and then just slam you know my other arts and level up my special and just spam my special and I would have another character in my group that would have the foresight that hey our health is coming down and they'd run around and they'd pick up those HP potions and heal us so in really long battles and very tough battles with like the special enemies um, that leave the headstones when you beat them so that you can go back and, and refight them and you can level up that way you can grind those uh, you know that helped a lot but I did have one blade that had a healing art so if it re if stuff really hit the fan I could switch to them real quick they had some good arts and specials but they had that healing art so I could s switch over them sp you know hit that uh, healing art immediately you know get back to a safe point then switch back to Pyra and just rock it and I mean like I had some tough battles there were a few that I lost you know but for the most part like even with the ending boss yeah I think it was probably like a 10 15 minute maybe even 20 minute battle I don't remember it's probably about probably about 15 minutes I'd say 15 minute battle because we were pretty pretty much the same uh, level you know I didn't struggle I just spam 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 and just HP everywhere you know and it was, it was really fun, and I like that. I, funny enough, I think they actually made this game easier, to be honest with you, because Xenoblade Chronicles X, I had 350-some-odd hours into it before I beat it. Now it had to be at, like, over 90, level 90. Whereas this, I beat in, like, an hour and 15 minutes. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I beat it in, like, an hour and... Or, hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> I beat it in 115 hours. Um... No, I beat it in 115 hours, so significantly less than X. Um, and I was like level 71 when I went into the final boss battle. I leveled up to 72, like halfway into it. And then when I beat him, I had enough HP, or HP, enough uh, experience to jump up to level 73. So I finished the game with level 73. And then, of course, it goes into like 20 minutes of amazing cinema that really just wrapped everything up in a beautiful beautiful little bow a little package that's just gave you everything you need gave you the closure uh, story was absolutely amazing with this game there was i mean it had everything there there was times that like just kind of right in the feels you know but uh overall this game just floored me monolith soft killed it with this game because they did everything right there's plenty of side missions if you want to do them, but they're not requirements necessarily to experience the story. Most of what you'll do in an affinity chart for yourself or for a blade, you're going to do just exploring the worlds, just grinding, you know? Um, I mean, like, there's some blades that have, like, you know, 44 you know, 44 different uh, skill sets in their affinity charts, 44 different things you unlock. And, I mean, there's some that I only did like 17 or 22 or 24 or something like that, still beat the game, you know. Um, then having the ability to send your blades off on mercenary missions and level them up that way, wonderful. You know, uh, they really thought about how to make the game more immersive and more focused and more concise and still give you over a hundred hours of very solid gameplay. I wholeheartedly intend on going back later, playing more of the game, maxing out the affinity charts, maxing out my characters level-wise as much as possible, and replaying the the final boss and and seeing how easy I can make that battle, um, doing a lot of the side missions. I'm not going to do everything. Um, I'm probably when I first got the game, you know, I had gotten Xenoblade Chronicles X, and I had gotten the collector's edition with the collector's edition uh, strategy guide, which did nothing, didn't help worth a crap, <laughs> but. 
I was left kind of going, why did I do that? Because the game, Xenoblade Chronicles X, was as disappointing as it was impressive. Now, I didn't get the collector's edition of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I think it's actually worth every penny. I really, I mean, because the game's worth 60 bucks. The metal case is probably worth five bucks. Soundtrack's worth 15 bucks, and the book's worth 20 bucks. Yeah, $100, the value is actually there. Um, I didn't get it because I don't care. You know, I didn't care about enough about what it came with to want it. Um, but I, I got the game really on the fence of whether I wanted the the DLC. But after experiencing this, I want the DLC. <laughs> so um, that is definitely on my short list to get. There's other things I have to get first, but that is, that is going to be happening. Because um, they really did kill it. They really did. Uh, there's enough... If you, obviously you ha you don't have to have played Xenoblade Chronicles or X to experience this game because they have nothing to do with each other. But there's enough of it that if you've played those, you're familiar, you know. And and there's that kind of like odd blend of it being familiar and and feeling like home, but being a completely new experience, which really contrasts very well. And if you've played the original one. There's some things that you'll see that were carried over as far as like storyline and some of the characters and things of that nature, which is really, really cool. Uh, also, props to actually making a note pond that I like because Tora is awesome. With, with Xenoblade Chronicles X, I was with Lin Lee. I wanted to kill and eat Tatsu. I hated that stupid no pond, but Tora. Man, <laughs> all the characters in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 are great. You care about them, and that's hard to do. That's hard to do and make a video game where you're invested that much that you care about the characters, um, you care about the story, and you really enjoy what's going on. So Monolith Soft absolutely just killed it with this. Phenomenal game. If you're into RPGs, you know, this has to be in your Switch library. It's just a phenomenal game, and I've already gone for almost 23 minutes, so I'm going to wrap this up because I could keep repeating myself over and over about how much I love this game and everything, and I know I didn't talk about everything, all right? Um, mostly because there's so much to talk about, the video would be way too long, and two, I uh, probably just, in being so passionate and, and talking about the game, I know there's things I'm forgetting, plus there's things that just need to be left unsaid so that you have something to truly experience. Something that's like, oh, he didn't mention this, but that's badass because <laughs> it's a phenomenal game. Seriously, if you don't have it and you love RPGs, get it. it, it it's, it's a must-have. Anyway, that will do it for this episode of Strictly Nintendo. Until the next one, take care.